the very thing that defines God is life. Life. So, you can say in the beginning, life. Life is the very essence of God. And eternal life is the goal of humanity. In fact, if there are, some people believe in pre-Adamite, of course. If they are pre-Adamite being, the goal is also eternal life. It's always been the goal of God to communicate his life to us. But let's stay with us. So, God is life. And we must understand that when it comes to life, life is not evaluated by things. That's why the Bible says that the life of a man is not consist in the abundance of the things that they possess. Life itself is a proof of existence. Life itself, its essence in itself. It doesn't need the adjective of riches, wealth, things, whether things made to qualify it or to prove it. I pray that the Lord will give us understanding. So it means that what the understanding of God, even though we understand God by the things we see, God himself is not by the things we see. Because God himself predates whatever we can see. God himself predates living. Hallelujah. God is a living God. But he himself, he lives in himself. God lives, he lives in himself. And one of the purpose of our existence is to actually carry the life of God, incubate the life of God, and actually birth the life of God. So the goal of Christ, the goal of Christianity, is life. What man lost in the Garden of Eden was life. Man didn't lose anything. He didn't lose anything physical or so. What he lost in the Garden of Eden was life. What the devil came to steal, to kill, to destroy is life. Hallelujah. If the devil is attacking your car, it's because he wants to get to the life. If he's attacking your health, it's because he wants to get to the life. If he's attacking your husband, your wife, your marriage, or whatever thing is attacking, the goal is not those things. The goal is the life. So when, when the Bible said the devil came to, to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy, that is the, the mission statement of the enemy. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Those things are three levels. Number one, it will steal life. You can be living and your life belongs to, to the devil. That's the life he has stolen. Then he can decide to even kill. Then he can decide to destroy. When the devil destroys a man, it means that there is an eternal separation between that man's life and the life of God. That's the level of destruction. But when the Bible said Jesus also came for a mission, he said, I have come for this reason. I have come to give them what? To give them what? Life. Not to give them miracles. Not to give them cars and houses. Not to give... Those things are good. I mean, if you've been around for a while, you know that it is better to drive Lexus than to drive Corolla. So I'm not trying to say all these things that emanate from that life are not useful I'm, I'm just saying that that's not why Christ came so the Bible said I, it said I have come that they may have life hallelujah that they may have life that's the first thing you have life before you have life abundantly let me, let me round up I will just try to tie, tie something 
in the beginning and I'll try, I'll try to tie something in Genesis and I'll take it to Revelation. Now, when God created man, the Bible said God gave him, God, God, uh, uh, in the beginning, let, let's go again. In, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the heart. So, in the beginning, the Bible was not talking about the beginning of God. It was talking about the beginning of God's adventure in creation. God decided that because God lives in the realm of timelessness. The realm of eternity is the realm of timelessness. It's a borderless life. So God decided to take an adventure into creation. He decided to explore some of his capacity, some of his essence and nature. So he decided to create something. The Bible says he created the heavens and, and the heart. This was because of God's intention to make a man that could incubate and produce his life. But when God created the heavens and the earth, God does not need to use eternal life to create it. See, God had to step down. Hello? Because one of the things you have to do is to leave eternity to create, to create time. You see, all that we are doing right now in time is to carry uh, is to carry something that will help us survive eternity. Because this age will not be forever. Alright? A time is coming that this age will end. Then we will enter eternal eternity. Right? The last thing like. So God had to step into time. And for God to step into time, he had to, he had to because God is infinite, cannot be known, cannot be comprehended, is too powerful to, for any being. To, to understand or come in contact with him. So, but God said, I, 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 there's something I want to do. So, he decided to step down. Somebody say step down. Say step down. So, God decided to step down that life, that very raw life of God, which is Zoe, the eternal life of God. He decided to step down into creation to bring that out. So when God stepped down, created Adam, the first man, and he began to teach the first man the ways of eternal life. Meanwhile, the first man does not it will have been impossible for that man to even come into the state of being fallen. Are you with me? So God stepped in, he stepped into time, he stepped down. He stepped to be able to even make Adam, right? To create every other thing he had to step down that life. Because I'm telling you, if God should appear with that life, if God himself should appear, the Bible says in Revelation that this present heart and heaven flesh. So he had to step down. It's like, ah, there was a time, I, I think we preached about, what was it? Was, um, I think power or something. Power brokers. Exactly. God had to step down that power, that life. Now, not just power, but the life of God. He has to step it down to come into creation. And that step down is called everlasting life. Somebody say everlasting life. Everlasting life. So Adam enjoyed everlasting life. Our world operates on everlasting life. Somebody say everlasting life. Everlasting life in a, is, is a life of is a life in God. It's not the life of God, it's a life in God. Please follow me. I'm going to tie it up tomorrow. That's why you can't miss. Because if you miss any of this meeting, you will go home with half, half revelation. Praise the Lord. Then, something happened. Adam lost that life. See, let me tell you, that everlasting life alone. Alone. Now, there's life. 
there's everlasting life there's eternal life anybody can have life all those the three categories are still expression of god's life they are still an expression of god of zoe but they are stepped down life why because they are they are civilized they are, they are there are, are things that we can't handle right now. There are things that the heart cannot handle right now. For instance, it is not the power that is coming from where, whatever, is it Kanjidam or where? Yeah? That electricity coming from that place where it is produced cannot enter your house. So they will first step it down somewhere. I think there is a step down around, I think maybe somewhere or something, uh, somewhere around here. There is a so it, it, you fought, the, the power is first stepped down there. Because that raw power cannot come into your house. So it will be stepped down there. As it's stepped down there, they will now take it again from there. That's the step down. It will now come into the local transformer. That's another step down. Then from there, it can be distributed to your house. You see, the life itself is the least of the step down of God's life. Living itself, living this life is the least of, of, of the expression of God's life. That's why Satan cannot just take your life anyhow. Because that life belo it still belongs to God. So Adam lost that life. And when Jesus was going to come, he was, go he was going to come to restore that life. Now the Bible says, now I'm not preaching. In fact, I don't have a note for this conference. This is not the kind of conference you prepare message. I don't prepare message for it. I just teach as the Holy Spirit leads. But I wrote some scriptures down. Let's look at those scriptures. Okay, let's, let's first of all go to, I have eight minutes more. Let's go to, um, John chapter 1 verse 1. John 1 verse 1. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2. In Him, He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Through Him and without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life. And that life was the light of men. So in Jesus was life, the life of God. In Jesus was the life of God. In Jesus was the everlasting life of God. Now, when you go to Jesus, John 3.16. Let's look at John 3.16. John 3. I mean, we can all recite it even offhand, right? What does the Bible say? For God so loved the world that he, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall what? Shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. See, whosoever believe in him shall have everlasting life. So when you come to faith, when you come to Jesus, first of all, you have the life. But when you come to Jesus, the first thing that you begin to have is everlasting life. Now, that's even different from salvation. For you to be saved, what you need to do to be saved is to confess the Lord Jesus and to, to believe that he came. That's, that's, that's what you need to do to, to, to gain salvation say, for, uh, with the mount. With the heart, man believes, and with the mouth, confession is made unto, unto salvation. So what brings you into salvation is your faith and your confession. And you need to confess because you, yourself, you need to loudly declare that you are now under a new master. All of us, we were dead in our sin when we came to Christ. So when we came to Christ, we came dead. So the first thing that God will give us when we came to him is life. I came to give you life. 
that's the first thing you receive and it comes with salvation by your confession are you following me but when you come into Christ that's when you begin to learn the life everlasting hallelujah that's when we begin to learn the life everlasting. Now, let me take us to, let's go to, should we do Titus? Hallelujah. No, let's not go to Titus. Yes, let, let, me, not, let me just tie it up because of our time. Now, the purpose of God for creating time or creating creation is to give us some kind of uh, is it probation? Yes. Probation. Now, time is going to end. Can we celebrate mama? <laughs> You're welcome, ma. Good to see you, ma. Ah, glory to God. Please, don't miss any, any day of this conference. Don't, 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 don't. So, let me wrap it up here. Now, the purpose of time, the purpose of time is a probationary period. It, it, it was in the eternal plan of God to move us from timelessness into timelessness. That is to move us in due time. To move us from time into no time. That's the original plan of God. But this time is going to be a probationary period where we are able to learn the very life of God. Where we are able to incubate the very life of God. I hope you know that Christianity is, is more than making heaven. This life we are talking about is not about, hey, will I make it to heaven? No. It's not about making heaven because you will still see, as I will conclude now, that even the heaven as you know it will pass. The earth as you know it will pass. So a time is coming when God will be able to be here with us by himself. Now, may I tell you, we, we say you carry God inside. Right? You carry God inside by faith. By faith. But a time is coming that God in itself, himself rather, in its Zoe life will come to us. There's difference between the two. Gabriel, when he was talking to Zacharias, he said, I am Gabriel. I stand in God's... What is he talking about? Because where, where Zacharias was ministering was supposed to be the presence of God. But he said, I stand in the presence of God. So there is another presence that he's talking about that Zacharias don't have understanding of. So what we are still doing now is by faith. That's why it is called a faith walk. You must complete this faith work for you to be open up into something else when timelessness comes. Revelation uh, 20. Let me wrap it up there. Then I will be, uh, for me, my sessions will be taking you through these two extremes of Genesis and Revelation. But before I read that, please, let me quickly read Titus, just to mention it. Titus, I'll read um, chapter 1. Let me read chapter 1. I'll just read it. I'll not explain. He said, Paul, a born servant of, of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which are caused with godliness in hope of eternal life. This is there. In hope of eternal life. See, there is an aspect of eternal life that we are yet to unlock and we cannot indeed unlock until a certain time comes. Let me read chapter 3. Let's go to chapter 3 of the same titles. Verse 4. Says, but when the kindness and the love of God our Savior to us man appeared, not by works of righteousness. Hello? Because even that one, that level, will not be unlocked by your works. Hello? Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy. Some of us don't understand the oppression of mercy has not been fully unveiled right now. Hmm. The oppression of mercy. I've not seen, because what do we use mercy for? 
to get a job, to get it. No, 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 no. Mercy is an oppression of Zoe. It comes before the life is opened up. He saved us through the washing of, of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become his. Ah, we should become his according to the hope of eternal life. Go to Revelation. Go to Revelation. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Let's read verse verse, verse, verse 11. It said, Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. <laughs> now, this is the raw the raw power from Candidam, the raw life, the Zoe Aeneas, is about to be revealed. As that life was coming, there is something about this present creation that cannot contain that life. I tell people that there are, there are civilization in God that the infrastructure of the heart cannot yet contain. Some of you, you say you use gas in Nigeria. You are not using gas. In America or developed world, you don't even see the pipe. You don't see the gas. You, you just pay and it's loaded. What you have here is a step down. Why? Because your infrastructure cannot actually hold that civilization there. So they step it down to you into, into 12 kg, 1 kg. They know some of you cannot afford $50 gas money in a month. So they step it down into 700 naira, uh, this thing into you. So that you, can, you will not miss totally out of that civilization. But the Bible says that now God is now bringing at the fullness of time. He's now bringing the full civilization of Zoe and the present heart and the heavens have to flee. They have to. They have to go. And there was no that there and there was found no place for them. It means that they were consumed into nothing. Now go to verse twenty-one. I'm running up now. Chapter twenty-one, rather. Chapter twenty-one, verse. Verse, verse 1. Now I saw a new heaven. Hello? And a new art. For the first heaven and the first art had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Because that civilization doesn't need it. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. I thought the tabernacle of God is with men already. I thought God is already living with us. He's living with us by faith. And I'm telling you, that by faith could do whatever he could do up there, here. So it's not that it's inferior. It's not inferior, but there will be a time that it will not be by faith. Now, God will come by himself say, and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself. Not that word. God himself. Why do they need to qualify? Why do they need to add that pronoun again? God himself. Of course, you know that when what, what Moses received was not from God himself. When he said, I want to see your faith, it was not God himself that appeared to him. It wasn't. Because he could, he, God cannot even step down. Not to talk of, see a man. I am not saying. <laughs> so God himself will be with them and be their God. God himself will be with himself. That is God himself in his glory, in his zoe, in his life, in his the crude form, the raw form, the old form. He will be with us himself. So we need to know that the purpose of this is to explore 
is to ex it will explore the many dimensions of that eternal life because God is ministering that life to us. Hello, he's ministering that life to us. He's teaching us the way of that life. That's why the way of la that life is different from the way of us. Our ways are different from his ways. We have our own ways, but it's different from his own way. So I drop the mic. I want you to open up your mind, your heart, your spirit to God.